Welcome back to a new season of Seven Days to Die's Darkness Falls. We're on Alpha 20.4. We're running a version of 4.03 of Darkness Falls. This is going to be episode 00. We won't be doing gameplay. This is going to be all about installing and configuring stuff. So if that's uh, going to be your thing, stick around. Otherwise, episode one will be out tomorrow. So let's first talk about how am I going to get this game? I love Seven Days to Die. I want to I want to kick things up a notch. One of the things you can start off with with Darkness Falls is you can go over here to the Discord server and you will find the most current downloads for Seven Days to Die. Up in the announcements, Kane will post whenever he's done new updates. And you can see here there's a download link to go get the Seven Days to Die uh, episode stuff here. And so we will take a look at that. It'll take you to this location here on uh, the Azure DevOps. And what you're going to do is you're going to do the, the installation guide is actually quite clear. And I didn't find anything misleading or off on that. So just kind of come in here, do a download of zip. You'll get the entire folder. When you do, it'll come in looking like that right here, Darkness Falls A20. Um, you'll want to open it up and drag it out just as the instructions say down in here. You want to zip and unfold it. The best way to do that is to go into your Steam file. I'll go ahead and close this so we can do it together. Go into the seven days to die. Do a right click on it. Click on properties. Click on local files. Click on browse. That'll show you wherever your darkness falls is installed on your machine. For me, it's here. Then what you're going to end up doing is you're going to drag this into the mods folder. Okay. Now, this will change your startup for seven days to die to Darkness Falls. You won't be able to one, run one or the other. If you want to do that, you might need to install the mod launcher, but the mod launcher can be a little finicky with seven days to die. Um, they really recommend that you do it this way. I think in my last season, I did it through the mod launcher. This season, I'm going to do it this way. So then you drop it on in, and it'll drop in these things into the mod folder. The next thing I'm going to do for me is I'm going to be playing uh, Grumpyville. Grumpyville is a map created by one of the moderators within Darkness Falls. Grumpy Beard over there is online. Uh, and you can find his stuff if you come all the way down into the modlets. You want to look for uh, DF Modlets add-on right there. And in here you will find a Grumpy's map there's the link to it when you click on that you'll end up over here the df grumpyville map so if you'll get this off of the github um, again you can just do a drop down on the code do download zip when you get it one of the things you're going to see when you get this is let me bring that back up my downloads again it's going to come out of the DF Grumpyville on a dash main. You're going to rename this. You're going to have to rename it to the Grumpyville, that one right there, the 5 dash DF, DF Grumpyville. If you don't do that, it won't load correctly when you start up your Darkness Falls mod. So then go ahead and rename that and drop that into the same mod folder we just had opened. Back and forth with these. It would help if I actually click on the right thing. There we go. Drop it in. There it is. It's five. So this is actually a load order. So this will load a five DF Grumpyville. Now that you've got the Grumpyville map loaded, if you're playing with me in Grumpyville, and that's going to be a, a mega series, a mega city. It's a big map for for, for Darkness Falls. Um, Obviously, it says here it was uh, inspired by Zhuodl, but it was done in a different way, and it's a much larger city. So I'm kind of I'm kind of looking forward to it. There is a picture of the map. I did a brief glimpse at it, and we'll do the same thing right now. We won't stay in here for very long. There it is. So you've got a big old map. It looks like it's got a whole bunch of stuff in there. Oop, closing it again because I don't want to spoil myself too much. I just wanted to see basically what it you know was was an all city. And it feels like it's all city with some outskirts of, of um, the, the woodlands, or maybe that's the radiated area or whatever. But we're going to find out together. Once you've got all that stuff installed, you can go, go ahead and close out your stuff there. 
you can do your start on seven days to die and then what your first thing you want to see is you want to see darkness falls here that'll indicate that you've got the mod installed correctly and then when you click on new game you can come in here and take a look and you'll see that there's df falls grubbyville 6k okay now there's a few things that i'm going to do one in my last up series one of the things i had was a few of the random items disappearing as i turned around in the game if you have doors and shelves and stuff that blink in and out of view one of the problems underneath options video go to quality and then come in here to occlusion and turn the occlusion off that should set things up fine then when you start your game you might need to double check that to make sure your occlusion is indeed off so we're going to do this i'm going to go ahead and start up a, the uh the thing get it loaded but like i said we're not going to be doing gameplay but we're going to get the thing loaded uh, we're going to call this one, uh, uh, <laughs> wait, uh, the Big Apple. How about that? Big Apple. There we go. And now we're going to talk about my settings. Uh, in the settings here, I'm, I'm going to be one player. I did Nomad before because I'm trying to find a balance between having a, a fight on my hands, but not making all the zombies basically bullet sponges. I don't, I don't want to have a case where I've got a basic zombie, a decayed zombie, and I'm having to whack it three times to bring it down. I, I want it to be a one-shot kill on those. But the tougher stuff, ferals and mutants level zombies, should take two to three hits to kill. And the big titans and behemoths should take much more than that. And then the, the specials at the end, which if you haven't seen any of my other gameplay, I won't spoil it for you here, should take quite a bit more. Nomad felt pretty good, but I think I'm going to go up one crack to Warrior. So one of the things that uh, the difficulty settings does is it changes the amount of damage you do. Um, though, as I understand it, head hits will still do full damage, but body hits will be reduced in damage uh, the higher you go up in difficulty. So that's one of the things that scale with it. Uh, how long do we want a cycle to be for 24 hours? I'm going to take 60 minutes here. Uh, it, I have been finding that most of my gameplay can be whittled down through editing down to about a half an hour for a day. Um, and so I'm going to try to keep doing that, though I will be not as aggressive. Uh, uh, the 30 minutes for me is not a hard cut. Mostly it's what happened, which is important. That sometimes I end up with a shorter cut. Uh, the day length will be 18 hours. Both of these are standard. Uh, this is how much time is in night. And during the night, zombies tend to run or sprint. And during the day, they can walk. We'll actually see where we're going to make a change to that. But uh, I'm going to keep it at 18 hours because I want to get some time to build. In the last series, uh, I felt, even though it took me about 70 some odd days in game to get to the end, um, I feel like... It was a little rushed. I, I didn't get the chance to do all of the building and the consideration that I wanted to. I felt like every time I, I, I was loading, I had to be very on point and get pushing. And even then, I kind of felt like um, when I was closing in on the end game, I wasn't ready for it. And I got hammered a few times because of it. So I'm going to want to make sure that I'm, I'm progressing at a reasonable speed, but not too, too fast. <laughs> uh, so max zombies this is the number of zombies the setting covers the entire map there can only be this many zombies on the entire map at any one time and changing it will change have a huge impact well i want the typical setting here is 64 zombies i'm going to kick that up a bit i'll go to the max 100 zombies keep everybody kicking around here and that would be just fine Maximum animals alive, typically that's 50. Again, I will go up and throw in the max number of them around. How many blocks that can I claim? The claim is a block you put down that says, this is my area. Uh, it has the effect of solidifying the blocks you place against other players. It has no effect against zombies. However, um, it does also have the side effect that anything that you've placed down, or I shouldn't say anything, most things that you've placed down within your claim area can be picked up again. So, for example, if I put down a workbench, I could pick the workbench back up. 
where if you don't have a claim down, you can't. You just have to salvage it. I'm going to go for the max five. This is basically how many places can I build up as a base? I think in the last season, I had three bases. I had my starting base. I had the base that I was using to uh, get the initial faction with Jen. And uh, then and I went out and did a desert base near one of the uh, Darkness Falls POIs. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this time. I, I've got a few uh, lessons learned that I'm going to be going through in this episode. Um, and we'll talk some more about a few of those. Underneath basics. Blood Moon Frequency. Typically, it's a seven-day cycle, so this is what everybody is used to. I'm going to add a bit more uncertainty into this game. Um, so I'm going to add this vary by a day. So that means the Blood Moon can hit on day six, seven, or eight. And then whatever it is, it can happen again in six, seven, or eight days from there. So it's not plus or minus from seven, as I, understand, as I remember when I did this two seasons ago. Um, it varies from the last one. The Blood Moon, uh, Blood Moon Morning will be in the morning, which I think is going to be kind of important. I could go evening, which is like stupid. <laughs> I, I, it's fine. I'm going to kick up the day speed of zombies to jog. Typically their move is walk, but they'll make them go a little bit faster. They can jog. Uh, at night, they'll be able to sprint. Ferals will always be able to sprint. And zombie blood moon speed is going to be sprint. I guess you can get nightmare too. You can make things go really fast. But I like the sprint because at least then I have this opportunity to do a baseless horde night. Um, I've done that a few times. It's intense. It's fun. But it's also a point that I'm trying to make, which is you don't have to have a horde base to survive. You just have to know what you're doing. I, I get the most... I, I'm, I'm reminded a lot of Vormithrax in playing uh, Cataclysm of Stark Stays Ahead, where he's talking about how you can run through cities. As long as you know what the, what the movement is all about and how you're going to parkour through things, uh, you can make it through. And it's pretty much true here, too. The only time I've ever had that kind of backfire on me was when I was out in the open and succubus were flying around kicking my ass. Um, zombie Feral Sense. Uh, we're going to turn this on Increase the ability of zombies to hear or see you. Um, we're going to give zombies feral sense at night. What this has meant in the past is that I could be walking through the city without a problem. And then as soon as darkness falls, the zombies come out of the woodwork. Because instead of, instead of seeing and hearing me five, six blocks away, they're seeing me and hearing me 50 blocks away. I, it, sometimes it feels like I have a mini horde hitting me every night when the, the, the darkness drops. So once you're in an area and you've cleared it, it's not so bad, but when you're in a new area and it turns dark, uh, it's, it's, it can get pretty rough. But we're going to keep that up for the fun of it. Persistent profiles are going to be on. Um, again, this is just, you, it, it, do I keep it on or off? Uh, allows my player to change your player profile. I'm fine with it, with the way it is. The XP multiplier, last time I had it at 150 because that I wanted to speed up the leveling of it. And um, it also has the uh, impact of uh, speeding up your game stage, which is why I felt so rushed before. I'm going to drop that down to 100%. So this will mean that it's going to take me about a third longer to get to end game, but it also gives me a third of more time. And I feel like that might be enough for me to deal with some of the things I want to deal with in the game. Under advanced, these are some of the things player block damage. How much damage do you do against blocks when you're trying to get through them? I'm going to leave them at hundred percent. Some people turn to something because they don't want to spend a lot of time whacking at stuff. I don't mind because if I'm mining, I'm going to cut that out. Uh, you can always leave a comment below if you want me to see me do things monotonously, like hit 15 trees 20 times in a row. Uh, I'll keep it in if you really want me to, but I don't think anybody wants to see that. I, I, I don't want to see it a second time either. <laughs> AI block damage. So this is basically do zombies. They're saying AI here because instead of uh, some things aren't technically zombies. Um, how much damage do these things do to blocks? I'm going to leave it 100% there, but on the Blood Moon, I'm going to give them a boost to 125%. So that means that a Horde base has to be well built because they're going to chew through it that much faster. Loot abundance is going to be normal, but my loot respawn is going to be disabled. I don't believe in loot fairies. 
I don't, I, I don't get it when you want to say that if you leave a chest sitting there for 30 days, it magically repopulates with stuff. Uh, no. The only thing I think is okay for that is, is things like nests. I can see a bird coming back and laying eggs again, but we're not going to do that. We've got other options in Darkness Falls, and that's one of the things I'm going to want to focus on this time. We've got farms. We've got um, we've got the uh, coops, the chicken coops, and we've got beehives. All of those will give you uh, basically the, the, the coops and the beehives are just like farms where they will generate eggs and feathers and uh, animal fat and uh, honey on a periodic basis. So we're going to use those. And we're going to disable loot spawn. Now, one of the other things I did in the last episode was I did double loots. So when you take a quest, you can go to a point of interest for the quest, loot it once, start the quest, the whole place repopulates, you go through and you do it again. Well, if I don't believe in loot fairies, <laughs> I'm going to have to stop that. So I am going to make a rule for myself in this playthrough that I am not allowed to double loot. Uh, there's a couple of places where I really wish I could. But we're not going to let myself do that. Uh, next is going to be, if I die, do I drop stuff? Am I playing Iron Man? No. Um, last season, I think I died five times. And I think three times I died because I kept throwing pulse grenades at my feet. So, shame on me. Um, I will try to keep my death, obviously, to a minimum. I'm not going to take silly risks. I'm going to play like it is. Uh an Iron Man-ish type of mentality. But if I do drop, if I do die, we're going to have backpack only. So basically this means that my backpack drops, so everything I was carrying goes to the ground, but my toolbar stays with me. This is really to assist in, in, in corpse runs. Um, I, I, I don't like the idea of having a long corpse run back to your stuff, but I also don't want to use death as a quick fix to carry my gear back four kilometers because I don't want to make the run. Um, <laughs> so we're going to drop the backpack on death if it happens. Uh, we're not going to drop anything if I quit. Yeah. Blood Moon count. So the standard Blood Moon is eight enemies. So this is basically how many guys are going to be al alive and running around and trying to beat on your base at any one time. This last time we did 16. Um, I felt like uh, 16 was... De definitely manageable. Uh, I never felt like I was overwhelmed. So I'm going 24. So this means on the Blood Moon, it'll spawn 24 zombies to come after me. And I've got to deal with all of that at once. Uh, enemy spawning is definitely on. If you're in creative mode, you turn it off. Uh, then airdrops every three days. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this going for every three days. Airdrops tend to have some needed materials in them they can have blades they can have the beakers they can have the uh the mastery books things like that so it is pretty important to have this especially if you find yourself soft locked on something um, the airdrops tend to be helpful from that point of view i'm gonna have cheat mode off and i want to mark my airdrops i am not very good at uh keeping an ear out for those and trying to mark them on my map and so uh, i'm gonna go ahead and mark it on my map Underneath multiplayer, a lot of this is going to apply to me, but we're going to keep uh, kill everyone on player killing. So uh, since I have no allies, I don't have friends, we're, gonna, we're not going to have to worry about that. The claim size I've turned up to maximum of 71 blocks. All this really means is how big of an area am I allowed to pick up stuff? Um, when we get in and we place a block, a claim block, you can actually uh, switch the block to show the area of your claim. And I, I usually do that. It puts a big old green box around my place, but it's uh, it's useful. There's a few things we're going to try to do this season with, with the fact that we know what our, our, our claim size is and also what a bedroll does for you. Uh, claim dead zone, no dead zone, doesn't matter. This is basically just how much space will you enforce between your land claim and somebody else's land claim. Again, the duration, the decay, all this claim stuff doesn't matter, really. So we'll leave it alone. Bedroll dead zone. So how far away do you have to be to be able to place another dead zone, another uh, another um, bedroll? Here, bedrolls create an area where zombies do not respawn. Any cleared sleeper volumes 
sleeper volumes that touch this area will not respond after they've been cleared. So what we're saying is uh, if I go into a house and I drop down my bedroll for 30 blocks around me, I won't have anything spawn. Uh, so if I've got a zombie sitting next to me, that's a sleeper, uh, it stays there, but once I kill it, it will not respawn in its three to four or five day time frame that it normally takes for a zombie to respawn. So this will be useful for us when we place down our base. We put a bedroll in the middle of the base and it keeps stuff from popping up in the middle of our base. It's kind of important. So I like to turn that up kind of high. I don't want, I, I, I don't think that zombies are going to wander in anything closer than 30 blocks from me and not have me know or deal with it. So I don't, I don't want things just popping up. Boop. Hi. All right. So then there's the bedroll duration. Uh, this is how active if, I get offline. I'm not going to be offline for two months, but just in case, that's what we're doing. Party shared kill range. So this is basically for multiplayer. If I kill something and I get 50 points of experience, do I share it with you? No, I don't I don't share it with anybody. It's probably why I don't have friends. And of course, you get to see a game port, which isn't going to be open. All right. So now I can start this up. But before I do, I'm going to back out for a minute. And we're going to go back into the seven days to die folder, which is under, oops, under there, Steam, Steam apps, common seven days to die mods. Underneath the mods here, we will see the, this, this particular mod here, Darkness Falls Wandering Horde map. Oh, Horde patch. Typically, the horde will the, the the game of Darkness Falls is a little bit more intense because it will spawn something akin to a screamer horde, not quite as intense. Um, once about once a day to come after you, and it usually ranges anywhere from ten to twenty type uh, critters uh, by default. If you go in here and go into the configs and go into the game stages, I believe. No. Blocks. Yes. You will see this underneath the blocks. This is the configuration file for the wandering horde that will spawn. As it says up here right now, it says, depending on where you've set this, it'll go from four to eight hours or whatever. I'm going to have mine spawn anywhere from eight hours since the last one up to 72 hours since the last one. It's usually, I think, something like 20 to 24. So roughly once a day, you will have a Wandering Horde. Now, once or so every three days, or up to three days, I'll have a Wandering Horde. It could be every eight hours. It could be once every three days. My idea here is I want to, I don't want to count on the Horde showing up. Um, we can deal with Hordes, that's not the issue. Uh, for me, I wanted to throw me something when my guard is down. I don't, I don't want to always know that it's about to happen and uh, work around it. That might be your thing, especially if you want a lot of action. I would say certainly turn down your max hours down. But I'm looking for that time when I'm in my point of interest and I'm halfway through and I start to hear feet. And I'm, oh, shit. <laughs> gotta run i gotta get out because you don't want to get caught at the end of something or i'm deep in a mine and i'm digging my long tunnel and i hear the feet and i'm thinking oh crap if they come down that hole i'm toast um that's what i want to have and hopefully you'll see that during this this gameplay so we'll see if that happens uh then you got the maximum number of zombies minimum and max value so when it does decide it's going to spawn a horde how many is it going to spawn and typically it's 10 to 30 i'm going to do it from 5 to 50 so this means that when the horde does happen, it could be a meh couple of guys, or it could be a holy shit, we gotta run. Uh, I'm 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 really hoping for a little bit of uh, suspense and drama to come out of that. So we'll see. But that's what I've done. I've changed this to five to fifty, so I'll get anywhere from five to fifty zombies every eight to seventy-two hours of gameplay. God, I hope it doesn't happen on the first night, but we'll see. All right. So now we got the new game. We got the Big Apple, Grumpyville. We set all our things. We saw that. Let's go ahead and start this up. And so now this is going to go ahead and build out the city and drop us in. 
So uh, once we drop in, I'll exit and we'll be done with that. So if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know down below. But I'm also going to talk about a couple of things I learned from last season, which I also did in the last episode. But we'll do that again here. Um, I changed the XP modifier to be give me a little bit more time to make things go a little bit slower. I've changed the wandering ward values to be a little bit more dramatic. Um, I'm, I need to get better barter earlier in the play. I, I got my better barter maxed out uh, end game, and that's I should do it sooner. I also need, hopefully, with the extra time, I need to build out some farms, some chicken coops, and some beehives much earlier in the game. And I want to plant things like blueberries, goldenrod, tomatoes, wheat, corn, potatoes, and aloe vera. The aloe vera is going to be for first aid bandages. The uh, blueberries, the goldenrod, the tomatoes are all going to be for ink. The wheat's going to be for dough because I want to try out some cooking stuff this time, which I really didn't do. I kind of glossed over it a bit this episode or this season. I want to I want to do it now with this next season with uh, trying to explore cooking. And then the corn and the potatoes, so I can always, if I need to, just make my meat, my meat stew, which is uh, fairly filling. It gives me some health. I also want to centralize my crafting base in the green zone somewhere because as it seems the hordes that do spawn do look at the location that you're in and when i'm crafting that's not what i want to deal with i when i want to deal with that i want to go with like a horde base or or set for it we'll see that i also want to, to take a look and try to design a better horde base with the succubuses in mind and maybe also include some turrets the succubus can blow through a roof um they're also nearly impossible to hit with melee weapons you have to use ranged with them and because she's a demon and she's flying it's just a pain in the ass and so i'm trying to think of ways i might get her caught underneath like a roof or a netting or something like that so that it could be a little bit easier to deal with so i i, I haven't figured out what i want to do with that base please feel free to give me some ideas if you have some ideas on how you want to build out that horde base we're also going to be using the grumpyville map uh, we just saw a little bit of a, of a brief picture of that. Of course, brief for me, but for you guys, you've got the pause button. So if you really want to see what it looks like, go for it. <laughs> but I'm going to see what happens. I'm going to try to stick around in the city a bit more. Um, I had considered just doing a city run like with no traders, but with Darkness Falls, you really need to do the traders so you get the quest line so you can go to the end game stuff. So we're going to be keeping that around, but we're going to try the Grumpyville map and see what happens to us. And there's certainly I want to try to do more cooking. And so we need the wheat for dough, uh, or we need to just get some coconuts. Coconut and uh, I think yeast is all you need to make dough. So I'll probably end up trying to go out and get coconut trees and plant a bunch of those. So I really want to make a much better build out of a farm and co-op than I have in the past. In the past, it's been just, you know, what do I need to make this to get to the end game and now i want to make it more like a an aesthetic feel like i've i'm seriously trying to survive here and this is my big old farm with all the stuff to that end i'm also going to try to design my crafting base with a little bit more aesthetic in mind in the past it's been very uh functional <laughs> i got a box <laughs> my, my base is a box i create box storage like everything's a box <laughs> so i'm gonna see if i can do something that's a little bit more attractive and, and stretch my legs a little bit we'll see how that turns out uh but with all of that we'll get the end game loading and then we will uh go into episode one tomorrow come back and join me and we'll see how that looks thanks again take care bye bye Creeping through the shadows and the corners of your mind I go with the windows, I run but I don't hide I hear the call of the wild, whispering the name No, I can't be tamed, my heart belongs to the night I'm alone, I'm alone, I'm, a, I'm alone, boy. I'm alone, boy. I'm a lone wolf, I'm a, I'm a, 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 I